Do you struggle with manifesting your desires in reality? Do you get discouraged when you don't see results right away? If so, then the time frame manifestation method is going to help you. In today's video, we're going to cover many topics that are going to help you specifically have confidence in using an actual interval of time to bring time into the process. You can manifest quicker with confidence and strategically so that you can move on to the next and the next building your manifesting muscle in a real practical and proven method. Stay here for this video. We're going to identify four things that you must do in order to actually manifest in your current reality. Number one, you have to know what you want. <laughs> you have to know what you want. Stop making excuses saying you're going to wait and see. You have to know what you want. Two, figure out what is stopping you. And again, the person in the mirror is the one that's got to be the answer. It can't be the rest of the world or what's happening outside of you. If that's your answer, do it again. That's number two, right? Figure out what you believe is stopping you. Three, find ways to overcome the obstacle, right? Hear me, hear me out. You have a reason. You have a person, a place, a thing, a time period, your situation, your body even, right? Your marriage, your divorce, your relationship, your family. Find and identify solutions, ways to overcome that obstacle. Four, keep working on it. Keep working on it until you succeed. So that's just four. And we're going to talk about many other ways to actually use this process. I'm glad you're here. Smash that like button, subscribe, and write a comment about what it is that you are struggling with that you're now going to use in this process. Hello, and welcome to today's class. We are talking specifically about how to set a specific time frame for your desires to come true. This is going to help enhance your manifestation process. My name is Anthony Quartino. Go by Sacred Cobra. If you don't already know this, this lesson is going to help you if you understand the law of attraction, if you understand going with the flow and you have been struggling to manifest within a specific amount of time because you may have the false belief that leaning into the unknown and jumping in the river means you can't have any expectations at all. Look, I understand. I've been there. I've done that. I've been working with this material most of my life and I'm still learning myself. This is going to help you understand how to have a positive expectation that is time-based so that it can benefit you and not cause limitation and not cause lack sensation. We're going to bring together a lot of concepts that you may or may not already know about, but we're going to make them come together. I taught this week to my group and the men are reporting amazing results and the women that they are still maintaining a level of peace and surrender in the knowing that they already have their wishes fulfilled. This is going to help you bypass any issue of expecting something when there is a limitation on time that you can actually persist in the belief that you already have that which you desire until it actually shows up. And you're going to find that this is going to dramatically increase your manifestation proof and especially, more than anything, your confidence around your manifestations. Let's jump right in. And again, I'm glad you're here because I'm addressing something that I have been working with and challenged my entire life. And I have been working with clients for the last six years. Then they are learning how to surrender, or get out of their own way, and yet answer this one question. We had this one question, but how do I manifest when there is a limitation on time. I understand, Anthony, that time's an illusion and time is vertical. How am I supposed to manifest something right now knowing that I have a desire and an outcome somewhere in the future? So we're going to handle that today. You're going to learn how to manifest something at a specific time by deploying a specific interval. 
an interval. We will explore different methods to overcome limitations of the manifestation process and how to connect with specific times and feelings to enhance the process. First off, we want to understand a little bit more detail, once again, of how manifestation actually works. When you try to create something without setting a deadline, it can make it harder to make it happen. This is because your mind and beliefs hold you back. If you don't see your creation happening right away, you might start to doubt the process. To make your creation happen it is important to understand the process and use the right tools. We're still talking about attraction, assumption, and we're talking about manifesting. We still want to and need to set a specific time frame for your desires to come true. I used to work with a coach a few years ago, and he talked a lot about structural tension. I use that term often. We want to have structural tension. We have a beginning and an end. We have an awareness. We don't want to be a stranglehold because that's going to cause lack of limitation. But this is going to help you create a framework, a period of time. It's going to allow you to have the focus and build confidence when you start proving this to yourself over and over again until you're eventually understanding just how powerful of a creator you are. Going here. We're going to talk a little bit about the Neville Goddard methods. A lot of law of assumption comes from Neville Goddard, one of the masters of law of assumption. I do other trainings and other books where I talk about him more. Here we're just going to talk about a little bit of a piece, right? We're going to talk about a portion of one of his books that highlights a process to use time-based manifestations. In chapter 15 of, this is Neville Goddard's book, in his book, your faith is your fortune by Neville Goddard. There is a Bible verse he references that is useful. We can manifest things on certain days, months, weeks, or years by choosing when we want the manifestation to occur. In this chapter, he explains how manifestation works and how to use the time intervals to improve them. We want to apply this technique of setting a specific time frame for manifestation and it's explained in his book. I highly recommend you get it. It says on Amazon. I have a link in the description for this as well. Very, very affordable. And you can probably find it for free as a PDF and go into detail and read word for word what he says. A little bit about the Bible verse and how it's a mansion, right? He talks about this a little bit. The Bible verse from John 14, one through three is the foundation for this manifesting process. I am refers to God and contains all conceivable states of consciousness, right? Alpha and Omega, everywhere and nowhere, throughout space and time, infinite space and time, right? We are always there. Every I am statement is going to encompass some aspect of God and the creator. And we are therefore able to hop into all of these states just by invoking that power that we are, because we are one with God. Each conditioned state is called a mansion in the terms of Neville Goddard and the reference to the Bible. This means that manifestation requires understanding your current state of consciousness and how it relates to your goals. What are we talking about, Anthony? We're talking about if my state of consciousness is I don't have this person in my life, if I feel and I know that my conscious awareness says, Anthony, I do not have this dollar amount in my bank account, right? I can be aware of my state of consciousness. However, I don't want to be a slave to it because I am the one that is affirming with my own awareness. We want to be aware. Where are you at in your consciousness? If you're saying to yourself, I have tried affirmations, I've tried manifesting, I've tried visualization, I've tried all these things, Anthony, and they're not working. The simple fact that you are aware of it's not working is exactly why it's not working. And if you're at the beginning stage of this process, that is probably a very confrontational and it's probably, you don't like hearing that. You have to build your muscle in a believable way for you, that you are proving this to yourself. So it doesn't matter what I say, you're going to find your own path. Your words are going to be different than what I'm saying. Don't just monkey and mimic me. Go 
and practice these tools. After you watch this, you're going to find a lot of tools. You're going to find an actual process where I walk you step by step at the end. And you're going to be able to download the ebook and download the process. Hang tight. If you're feeling something that's good, that's why you're here. You're here to face this material and finally learn something that maybe you just haven't heard before. And if not, maybe you'll find something after today that makes it click because you already know these things. You are the one getting in your own way. And I'm speaking from experience. Each state is a mansion, meaning it's already built. Once you have that consciousness, you already are in that state, the mansion and the castle. Now, overcoming limitations. Many people create something in their imagination. In fact, we all do, right? If you are thinking of anything at all, you are creating because you have your imagination already operating. I want to be aware of this. You're creating in your imagination. But when it doesn't happen right away, you may automatically go back to the former state of being, the old mansion, if you will, which means you're focusing on the current house, the current castle, the current mansion, the current consciousness, your current I am statement of I don't have it, I'm not enough. And you're just affirming your disempowerment again. Of course, this is very likely you're going to over to overcome limitations. You are going to have to change your consciousness over and over again until the shift happens for a longer period of time and permanently. To overcome this limitation specifically, you're going to employ a specific, specified interval of time in making this journey into your prepared mansion. This means that you need to have a clear understanding of your manifestation goals, right? You have to have a goal for your manifestation and the tools you can use to overcome limitations. Again, lots of people imagine things. I imagine every day. You imagine every day. You're imagining before you came on here. You're imagining right now as you're watching or listening to me. But when it doesn't happen quickly, you go back to the feeling of not having it. To fix this, you need to spend time focusing on your goals. Now, my mind, I'm here. My, what's coming for me is how many times I hear my clients say, Anthony, I can't focus on my goals. I'm focusing on the problem. Yeah. Do not focus on the problem. Get the awareness. Take the beat. Take the pivot. Take the bounce. And then immediately, as fast as possible, within your ability, shift to the goal and make that the focus more than focusing on the problem because you focus on the problem, the problem lasts longer, gets bigger, you focus on the goal, it comes faster and you learn things along the way and you get closer and closer to the goal. Focus on the solution, not the obstacle. Here's how you're going to do that. Number one, know what you want. I'm going to tell you, working with individuals for the last six years, this is probably the hardest thing for everybody. I can do the work with you on our one-on-one -on -one calls. I can do the work with you in our groups. And when I give homework, the biggest challenge that you're going to have or that you could have, and I've seen have, because I had the problem too, is actually saying, I want, we get too generic. We get too abstract. We start feeling like we're being selfish. Some, someone's going to be mad at us. We have that one thing. Stop that. Pick something. Get specific as fast as possible, manifest it, and then just change what you desire next. Know what you want and avoid any excuse coming up from your conscious mind telling you, I don't know what I want. I'm going to wait and see because if you wait and see, that means you're never going to get what you want. You're going to get what you don't want because you're going to wait and see. Stop that. You want to know what you want first. You can't have anything <laughs> that you want unless you know what you want. Then number two, figure out what's stopping you. Now I'm going to go a little deeper here, right? Chances are, depending on where your consciousness is, you may be saying, oh, Anthony, I know what's stopping me. My husband, my wife, my kids, my income, the world, the tragedy of the world, racism, sexism. That's what's stopping me. Okay. Take a breath. For me too. If part two of this makes some external thing that is keeping you from getting what you want, I want to ask you to ask this question a second time to yourself. Figure it out. Figure out what you 
what's stopping you from doing this, from being positive, from believing that you have it already, from moving towards your goal? What's stopping you from taking the bounce? So you can be aware of the problem, but focus on the solution. It's going to be something with you. Please do this one more than once, but write it down so you can get it out of your head and then move on to the next answers. So number two is figure out what is stopping you. Number three, find ways to overcome these obstacles, right? This is getting support, asking for help, continuing to ask for help, finding your own solution. Hiring the right professionals, whether it's a coach like myself or hiring if you're looking, need to get an attorney to get through a divorce, if you need to do some estate planning, you need to change your finances, hire a CPA, hire a certified financial advisor. There's so many professionals that you can use to help you identify them, find the ways, leave the limitation ideas while you can't have them out of the way. First, figure out who they are and the ways that you can overcome it that are based in your reality. Then keep, number four, keep working at it until you succeed. This is perseverance. Classic Tony Robbins statement, right? He likes to say, when someone says, I've tried everything, he's gonna fire back, really? You've tried everything? If you had tried everything, then you would have succeeded. If you had tried everything, if you tried a hundred things, you would have succeeded. The reality is that most of the time you and I We'll try one, maybe two or three things. And if we're really trying, maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And on the extreme. And most of the time, that means you've already overcome it. But if you tried it a handful of times and you've gotten frustrated, you didn't like the results, you think it should have happened, but because somebody else got involved or some other thing happened outside of yourself got involved, then you give up and you say, I have tried everything. That's BS. That is your belief system. When I say BS, it's belief system on this channel and in this class. That's on you because you haven't tried everything. If you had tried everything, you would already have what you wanted. Keep working on it over and over again and refining your process. Don't let it fail. If you fail, it means you completely given up and you don't pick it up again. Spend time focusing on your goals and figuring out how to make them happen. Not how they don't make them happen. We did it at the beginning, but moving on, how you can make them happen. Now we want to connect this. I know what I want. I know what's getting in the way. I know it's me, right? I know some of the things I need to do to overcome the obstacle, get what I actually want. I know the framework. I know the steps. I know some of the steps, enough to get started. Now, want to make it a reality. I want to get into the actual feeling state of having it. I need to get some real feelings around this, Anthony. You're going to connect it with a specific time. We all have certain emotions associated with different times of the year, such as Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, and seasons like the summer, spring and winter, right? We all ask my client the other day, can you remember what Christmas feels like? And of course, they had a negative experience, but we removed that and said, hey, but can you think of the good feeling, the feeling of it's Christmas Day, you woke up Christmas Day, what does that feel like? And boom, they went right there. They went right there. Wasn't hard at all. You can choose right now, what does summer feel like? What does spring break, spring break at the time of recording is literally this next coming week. What does spring break feel like? And my favorite is what does lazy Sunday? What does the case of the Mondays feel like? And again, we've all experienced a time period where you looked at a friend or a partner and said, my God, it's, it feels like Friday right now. And it's Wednesday. And chances are they may agree with you. We've all experienced traveling through time on specific day intervals based on our feelings that we know what these days feel like that. It's important to know which times and feelings can improve your manifesting process. Identify specific times and feelings that can improve your process. Again, avoid any negative pattern to identify a negative aspect of the process. Pick the date and time that you can remember and feel that is going to make you feel abundant and prosperous. 
Now we're going to, so that was creating the specific time frame. Now we're going to, the connecting with the specific time frame. Now we're going to create the time frame. And this has been really amazing because I've been teaching this specifically for about two weeks now. And the individuals I work with, this is taking them to the next level. This has helped them sustain the feeling until it actually shows up. And then they see other bridges of incidents happening along the way, which again is increasing their confidence, which is why we're doing this. Documenting the process along the way. To make this visit happen, imagine it's Sunday instead of Wednesday. Feel as if it is Sunday by hearing the church bells. If that's going to resonate with you, pick what makes sense. Pick what makes sense. We know that I am a, do a lot of spirituality coaching. I am not focused or specific to one specific dogma, but this makes sense for those who can think of the bells and they go through that routine. Find your routine. Find your routine that is sacred for you to experience Sunday instead of Wednesday or any other day. This exercise is for you to use. Focus on all of the positive feelings that Sunday brings to you. This will help you create and manifest the experience that you desire. Make sure to have a clear understanding of the specific time frames that can enhance your manifesting process, right? You can think of Sunday, feel Sunday, and what you want to happen on Sunday, go there, make it happen. Use this exercise as practice and then pick something else if you need to actually apply it to your specific case. Now, overcoming beliefs and the confidence. Again, confidence has been a big piece that I've found everyone is still getting after teaching this process. To achieve your goals, you need to assess your beliefs, your confidence, your abilities, and your past experiences. Determine what you can realistically accomplish in a few days or months. Right? I was talking to Wayne today, and he said, yeah, this has been really great for me because it helps me distinguish. I have a different feeling if I'm trying to manifest a, a jet plane, an F-22, by tomorrow afternoon. Right, I can get into the feeling state, but is it realistic and is that what I'm really trying to accomplish? It's going to have a different level of authenticity. We want to still go for things way out of our reach. This is, going to, this is how we apply a time-based approach, but needs to be somewhat believable within its possibility within your wheelhouse. This requires you to have a clear understanding of yourself and what you can achieve. Understanding where you are at, again, as the beginning of the presentation. Remember, being aware of your current consciousness, right? Are you asleep? Are you awake? Or are you in the state of being is going to change how you approach this process. This process will work if you have never done it before. The goals are going to be different for you than for me or for anybody else is already been working and proving this to themselves. We're all going to go as far as we are able to do with the work. Now, again, determine a rational interval. Make it believable. Once you believe in something, figure out how long it would take for it to happen naturally. What would make you believe this is possible? What is your normal expectation of time? but somewhat tied to what's realistic. And then you're going to use these processes to make it better, make it stronger and faster. But we're not going to pick, like Wayne said, we're not going to pick, I'm trying, it's to, today is Friday, the week before spring break, and I'm trying to manifest a, a, a three-story building to be built right in front of my very own eyes by tomorrow. That's not realistic. That's not going to happen. That's ludicrous. We want to have a little bit of crazy, and delusion in our manifesting, but if you don't, if you literally don't believe it's possible, you're reaching too far and you're going to trigger your lack of consciousness, and that's going to get in the way of everything. You can meditate and think about it and try to feel it as if it could happen in a few hours, days, months, or years. This means you need to know how long it takes for things to happen in order to make them happen for you. Figure out how long it would take. Figure out how long it would take for your desire to happen naturally. Now we want to add in the confidence. 
term manifestation. Your confidence in yourself affects how quickly things happen. Again, we're just repeating. I'm repeating myself over and over again in subtly different ways. Make sure that you're creating things with a clear head and a good sense of what is true in your word. Again, it's about alignment. Now, remember, we are always aligned. You want something, you think about it, you're already aligned to that thing. You think someone's going to cheat on you. You think someone's going to lie to you. You think you're going to get divorced. You are automatically always aligned to the thoughts in your head. We will remove any idea that alignment takes work. Alignment does not take work. Alignment may, means notice where you're at in your consciousness and then choose. Do I want to stay here or do I want to make a different choice? The choice is yours because, again, the mansion is already built, right? Your I am statement is going to instantly align you with what the words are that you're putting into your head and saying out loud, and then your action is going to follow shortly after because we're creating from thought and feeling and then manifesting it in our real world with our actions based on what's going on inside of us, right? Yep. Now, you should know your own confidence levels and abilities. You can make things happen the way that you want. Again, remember, you put yourself in alignment because you're already aligned. We're not talking about manifesting from your disempowerment. You think you can't do anything. This is not going to work because you are aligning yourself. You don't have a clear head. With a clear head, this process works because you're going to have a certain level of confidence about what you're expecting to make happen for yourself. Now, we want to have a predetermined manifestation. I'm bringing this up because I teach my techniques, and one of them is the going to sleep with the wish fulfilled, again, from Neville Goddard. And when I hear my clients and I ask them for a couple of weeks, explain to me what's happening. Explain to me what's happening for you when you're doing the process. And typically, they were, they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to create their goal and their vision as they're going to sleep. And I'm like, no, we have to already have it figured out. You must have this figured out beforehand so that when you are visualizing and creating your manifestation, you already know what it looks, feels, sounds, and tastes like, period. You go right into it. You want to predetermine the mansion, the manifestation. You create your future reality by having confidence in yourself achieving your goals, believing in yourself, and accepting what you believe to be true. You have to believe that it's true. To manifest your goals, you need to understand them clearly and have confidence in yourself, your abilities, and your beliefs. In conclusion, this method is going to help you save time and plan your goals in advance. Start with something small that you believe will happen and focus on creating a strong feeling of what it would be like, what it would feel like to have it when it does. Think about the time of year or day when you want it to happen while you imagine it. Go to the summertime, go to springtime, go to the wintertime. This will make it feel more real and create a clear target by understanding how manifestation works. Your beliefs, confidence, and past experiences you can improve your chances of achieving your goals in a reasonable amount of time. Set a specific time frame for your desires to come true. If you enjoyed this lesson, this is a lesson that I recorded for my students that are working with me on actually manifesting their dreams into reality. And I wanted to put this in a way that I could share it with you here on YouTube. Now, if you want more of this, if this is if, I'm, if you're hearing something for the first time is making sense or it's the 10th time and finally it's clicking in, that's what we're going for. We are focusing in my groups, we focus on creating more prosperity and unconditional love, no matter what the excuses are. If you want, take a look, take a look below. If you want to go deeper, if you want to awaken your reality, if you want to use the creator consciousness and awaken it. It may be asleep right now. <laughs> if you want to go from being awake to being in the being state more often, if you want to transform your life, take a look below and 
download the ebook, download this presentation, and get the support you need. That's your invitation. If not now, then when? That's all for now for me, and I'm going to move on with my day. I'm in the middle of packing and moving pretty soon, and obviously next week at the time of this recording, it is spring break, and I got this t-shirt for my birthday last week, Get Swifty. Thank you very much. I'm obviously a Rick and Morty fan. And for right now, I'm just going to do a sign off. My name is Anthony Cortino, of course. Sacred Cobra, reminding you that you are sacred. You are worthy. You are loved. And just let the love out. We'll see you next time.